Take heed to thyself, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land whither thou goest, lest it be for a snare in the midst of thee. Ye shall destroy their altars, break their images, and cut down their groves. But thou shalt worship no other god, for the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous god. Lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and they go a whoring after their gods, and do sacrifice unto their gods, and one call thee, and thou eat of his sacrifice, and thou take of their daughters unto thy sons, and their daughters go a whoring after their gods, and make thy sons go a whoring after their gods. Thou shalt make thee no molten gods. As we dive into altars, idolatry, sorcery, and witchcraft in the Spirit Realm series, these topics would take several chapters to explain. Witchcraft and idolatry is a deep subject. We can't talk about evil altars without sorcery, witchcraft, and idolatry. These topics intermingle with each other. Last week, you learned about evil altars. You discovered that the beast system have evil altars everywhere. You also learn that religion is not the only place with evil altars. The beast system is infested with evil altars. With Satan being the god of this world, every altar in the beast system will be built to principalities and powers. The scriptures clearly state that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. The word of the Most High revealed that we are dealing with principalities and powers, the rulers of the darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in high places. We are not dealing with other human beings. Israelites, I hope you're beginning to see that you're wasting your time when you fight flesh. When you're arguing and going back and forth with another person, when you get physical with a person, when you protest to get the heathens to treat you fairly, all of this is a waste of time. Fighting in the flesh is Satan fighting against Satan. You will lose every time. Many of you need to understand that the Most High, the God of Israel, is not worshipped in the beast system. The God of Israel is an enemy to many people in the beast culture. That is why it is important for you to know who you serve. Israelites, when you make covenants with the beast system, you become an enemy to the Most High. The scripture said, accepting their wickedness make you an enemy. Don't have anything to do with the beast culture and its traditions. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. The Most High the Father has a lot of enemies. Israelites don't become an enemy unaware. The indigenous black people and the other species of mankind don't worship nor serve the same God. Matter of fact, the Israelites and the other indigenous bloodlines of the scriptures don't serve the same God. If the God of Israel is your God, don't let the heathens deceive you into believing you're worshiping him in the beast culture, especially in religion. The scripture said, the world hate the father and they will hate you who serve the father. If the world hate you, ye you know that it hated me before it hated you. Indeed, the world hate the father. A lot of people worship, serve and love the Messiah more than the father. The father doesn't exist to some people in the beast culture. Jesus has taken all the glory of the father in the awakening and in religion. If the world is an enemy to the Father, and Jesus died for the sins of the world, and the world love and accept Jesus, are you sure he's the most high in the flesh? The most high let us know in the scriptures that the world hate him, and the beast system only accept its own. The earth was given into the hands of the wicked. The wicked serve idols. Israelites, I have to make it very clear to the minority few in the Israelite community and to the other descendants of Adam that served the Most High the Father. 
the heathens' gods is not our God. Regardless of their numerous attempt to convince you that we all serve one God, which is false, the scriptures point out that every nation had their God. The first command the Most High gave to the Israelites when they were about to inherit the promised land, the Most High charged the Israelites to break down the altars and every high places the heathens worship and serve their gods. These are the statutes and judgments which ye shall observe to do in the land, which the Lord God of thy fathers giveth thee to possess it, all the days that ye live upon the earth. Ye shall utterly destroy all the places wherein the nations which ye shall possess served their gods, upon the high mountains, and upon the hills, and under every green tree. And ye shall overthrow their altars, and break their pillars, and burn their groves with fire. And ye shall hew down the graven images of their gods, and destroy the names of them out of that place. As you heard in the scriptures, the Most High made the Israelites break down the altars in every high places the heathens served their gods in the promised land. Abraham, our father, he destroyed the idol gods of his father's house when he saw that they were useless. The problem many Israelites and indigenous black people are struggling with in this generation, they won't break the altars in high places where the heathens serve their gods. They rather join the heathens in serving their gods. Some Israelites take the doctrines of the heathens, alter the doctrines to their liking, and serve the gods of the heathens. Israelites, regardless if you alter the doctrines to fit your narrative, you're serving an idol god. This is why you must allow the Most High to transform you by renewing your mind. At an altar is where the workers of iniquity worship and serve their gods. The workers of iniquity give their idol gods sacrifices on the altar. The word of the Most High said that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice on their evil altars, they make those sacrifices to devils and not the Father. The Most High don't want his people to have any fellowship with devils. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. The heathens' altars have an idol behind it, and the heathens don't make any of their sacrifices to the Most High. Who are they serving? The word of the Most High made it very clear that the beast system does not serve and worship the Father. The word of the Most High said the heathens are making their sacrifices to devils on their evil altars. Every altar have a God behind it. Whatever God the worker of iniquity who built the altar serve is the God that is behind that altar. Now that you know the Most High is not behind any of the altars in religion as well as in the beast culture, you heard in the scriptures that the heathens are making their sacrifices to devils. The time has come for the people of the Most High to separate themselves from the traditions of the children of disobedience. The scriptures made it known that the prince of the air, which is Satan L, many of you know as Satan, operates in the children of disobedience. Wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. What do the righteous have in common with the children of disobedience? If we have nothing in common with the heathens, how can the heathens and the Israelites serve the same God? The wicked and the righteous have nothing in common. The workers of iniquity created a standard way for all people to serve the Most High. There is not a standard way for anyone to serve the Most High. Everyone's personal relationship with the Father is unique to them. My experiences with the Father is not going to be identical to everyone else's who serve the Most High in the Spirit and in truth. We all are at different levels on our journey. Therefore, my walk with the Father is not going to be identical with your walk with the Father. Especially if the Most High gave me the spirit of discernment, wisdom, and understanding. Only the Most High can give the righteous understanding of the sealed scriptures. No heathen school can open up the scriptures like the Holy Spirit. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit for the spirit searcheth all things yea the deep things of god 
For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. No one knows the thoughts of the Father except his spirit. Therefore, no heathen can teach you the word of the Most High. Only the Holy Spirit knows the thoughts of the Most High. That is why the scriptures say the kingdom of the Most High is within you. The Satans in the beast religion removed the intimacy between the Most High and his people. Religion made our customs and traditions inclusive to all. Just as the racial group black in the beast system is inclusive to all people, while everyone else's racial group is exclusive. When the workers of iniquity made our spiritual journey an all-inclusive walk, it deceived many to believe if their neighbor's journey with the Father is not identical to theirs, something is wrong. The individual have fallen into sin. A good example I can give you is when I started to tell you about the prince over our people, the holy angel Michael. So many thought open diary went left despite the scriptures in the Bible revealed this information to our people. But I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth. And there is none that holdeth with me in these things, but Michael your prince. A lot of Israelites read the scriptures without understanding. While most don't read the scriptures, they follow popular trends and religions standardized way of serving the Most High. Israelites, when are you going to become set apart? The Most High said to his people, Be holy, for I am holy. And ye shall be holy unto me, for I the Lord am holy, and have severed you from other people, that ye should be mine. An altar is a place where humans interact with spirits. Also, at an altar is where the workers of iniquity use the powers of spirits, such as demons and unclean spirits, to obtain their heart desire. There are different types of altars. The first altar we will discuss are tree and forest altars. I usually see these types of altars in the communities of the indigenous black people who live in villages and remote places. Keep in mind, those are not the only place you will find tree and forest altars. The heathens love the woods. Some of you have heard of the Bohemian Grove. At this special gentleman's club, they have an altar in the middle of the woods. The Most High is definitely not the God that giant owl on their altar represents. When the Most High command the Israelites to destroy the heathens' altars and high places, the scriptures mention trees and groves. Some people have tree altars in their backyard. I've seen random altars on hiking trails. Tree and forest altars is where a lot of pagans serve their idols and make their sacrifices. I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people, which walketh in a way that was not good, after their own thoughts. A people that provoketh me to anger continually to my face, that sacrificeth in gardens and burneth incense upon altars of brick. A lot of pagans love to worship in the woods. Tree altars are very common. Most people who come across random tree altars look past them. Most people have no knowledge of what they're looking at. In the spirit realm, if you see yourself tied to a tree or under a tree, the dream is indicating that you're tied to an evil tree altar. Ye shall utterly destroy all the places wherein the nations which ye shall possess served their gods upon the high mountains, and upon the hills, and under every green tree. There are market altars and picture altars. Israelites, social media is a gateway for those who practice sorcery and witchcraft. Most people post their pictures and the photos of their children and family. To the Israelites who serve the Most High in the spirit and in truth, social media is a playground for witches and warlocks. Be mindful of what you post. There are effigy altars and marine altars. Marine altars are usually close to a body of water. Most people mistake marine altars for decoration. A half-naked or a nude statue near a pond, lake, or any body of water is not decorations. The workers of iniquity want you to believe it's a decoration so you will interact with it. 
Most people come across wishing wells that are in public places, such as parks, hotels, and other establishments. They make a wish thinking their action is innocent. They have no idea that they establish a covenant with the idol behind that altar, disguising itself as art. Israelites, stop following the traditions of men, especially if you have no knowledge of where this tradition started. Israelites, now do you see how our people is being destroyed from a lack of knowledge? Stop rejecting knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Another type of altars are gates. The word of the Most High talk about the city gates in many scriptures. Gates are the strongest altars. The mother harlot, the Roman Catholic Church, have altars in the form of a gate all over the world. That is why so many are being deceived by her and her daughters. Most people believe the Romans have unique building structures. A lot of their architectural designs have one particular design embedded into all of the most famous buildings. Many work hard to preserve these structures. The columns most of you see on their buildings and at times standing by themselves are not what you think they are. Most ancient cities that were destroyed managed to have a particular section of those buildings remain standing. To some people, it may appear to be weird that the only thing remains standing in the ancient cities are the columns and gates. Israelites, it's not a coincidence. These columns are disguised as architectural support for the buildings. However, the columns are actually gate altars. The scriptures often call those columns pillars. So many people book expensive trips to visit evil altars in the form of preserving history in the beast system. All these cities were fenced with high walls, gates and bars, beside unwalled towns a great many. The earth was given into the hands of the wicked. If your spirit is tied to an evil altar, you won't be able to see the wickedness that surrounds you. Satan will desensitize you from seeing the wickedness in this world. The word of the Most High said, Satan has blind the eyes of many people. Israelites, I challenge you to allow the Most High to renew your mind so that you can see what is happening in the world around you. When the Most High scattered our ancestors to the four corners of this world through the slave trade, the heathens whose captives our ancestors were built buildings similar to the Roman gate altars. Benin have a gate altar disguised as a memorial for our ancestors that was taken into captivity. This altar that is said to be a memorial is called the gate of no return. Israelites, you decide whether that gate is an evil altar or a righteous altar. I'm not sure why we need a memorial for our deceased loved ones that were taken into slavery for their disobedience to the Most High. The Most High said he is not the God of the dead. He is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. Ye therefore do greatly err. The Most High will never involve the dead with the affairs of the living. The dead don't know what is happening in the physical realm. I'm not sure why there's a need for a memorial dedicated to the struggles our ancestors face. Why would the leaders of that place call the memorial the gate of no return? The purpose of this gate is to bring money for those who will profit from the altar disguised as a memorial. Ghana have a gate altar similar to the structure design of Rome in Accra. Written on the gate, freedom and justice. They put a giant star on top of the gate. I hope the star doesn't represent the angel that is called the morning star. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? I, Jesus, has sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. When the Most High open your eyes, you will begin to see the abominations in the beast system disguised as good deeds and reverence for the Most High. 
Majority of these altars have another purpose to the popular meaning the workers of iniquity who profit from these altars proclaim. Gates are known for protecting a person's home or property from intruders. Most ancient cities had gates fortifying the city. Gate altars are the mothers of all altars. Rome has many gates all over the world. Rome is known as the mother harlot. That is how Rome is controlling many in the beast system. Even the Israelites in the awakening are defending Rome's doctrines. Gates are powerful altars. The Messiah said to his disciples that he will build his church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Gates are the most effective altars. That is why the mother harlot is very successful in the beast system. Over three billion are tied to her evil altars all over the world. Her doctrines are taught in numerous churches and Israelite assemblies all over the world. The Protestant church claim they separated from her, but they continue in her traditions. Many Israelites in the awakening said they have come out of her, but continue with her doctrines. The gates of hell scattered all over the beast system from Rome are controlling many. To the righteous, don't let their wicked altars scare you. The Most High said in his word that we will possess the gates of our enemies. That in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. The Most High's kingdom have gates. Remember, in everything there is good and evil. The scripture said there are 12 gates with the names of the tribes of Israel written on them in the New Jerusalem. The Messiah has the keys to the kingdom. Levi, the progenitor of the Levite tribe, said an angel opened the gates of heaven to him. When the angel opened the gates of heaven, Levi said he saw the Most High sitting upon his throne. And thereupon the angel opened to me the gates of heaven, and I saw the holy temple, and upon a throne of glory, the Most High. By now, we all should know the Messiah is the key holder to the coming kingdom, and he alone have the keys that access the gates that leads to the Most High. When I revealed the identity of this angel and told the Israelites he is the Messiah, the Deliverer, a lot of Israelites were afraid to believe, while a few already received the revelation. Levi revealed this angel to us in the Testaments of Levi. The Bible revealed the same angel to us. The Holy Spirit has to open the sealed scriptures for you to find him. The book of Baruch said the gates open only to him. This angel is the key holder. Just as the Bible said the Messiah had the keys to the kingdom. The book of Enoch revealed that angel is the intercessor for the Most High. The same intercessor that is a mediator between the Most High and men. He is the angel that is the prince over Israel and over all the righteous. Michael, one of the holy angels, to wit he that is set over the best part of mankind and over chaos. And I said to him, I pray thee, O Lord, tell me thy name, that I may call upon thee in the day of tribulation. And he said, I am the angel who intercede for the nation of Israel, that they may not be smitten utterly for every evil spirit attack it and after these things i awake and bless the most high and the angel who intercedeth for the nation of israel and for all the righteous and i will give thee enoch my intercessor the archistratage michael for the handwritings of thy fathers adam seth enos canaan mahalalel and jared thy father and now fear the Lord, my children, and beware of Satan and his spirits. Draw near unto God and unto the angel that interceded for you, for he is a mediator between God and men. And for the peace of Israel, he shall stand up against the kingdom of the enemy. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered. 
everyone that shall be found written in the book. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. The angel takes Baruch to the next heaven, identify as the fifth heaven, where Baruch faces the closed gate upon which the names of men are inscribed. The gate opens only to admit the commander-in-chief, Michael, the key holder of the kingdom, descending from behind it with a great sound to receive the prayers of men. He holds a cosmically sized bowl into which the virtues of men enter in order to be brought in it to God. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. Israelites, wake up. If you believe I'm wrong about the Messiah, I dare you to ask the Most High. Many Israelites can't see correctly because the God of this world has blind their eyes. The Most High is waking up the remnant to truth. Gate altars are powerful altars. A lot of Israelites are still tied to the gates of hell. The head leaders of the synagogue of Satan place all over the world. Until you break the covenants and seek deliverance, Rome will continue to control your every move. There are other types of altars not mentioned in this message. Now that you're aware and your knowledge has increased about the various evil altars in the beast system, I will show you how witchcraft and evil altars mingle with each other. Witchcraft is when a worker of iniquity disguised as a high priest makes sacrifices on an altar to an idol god. The request being made on the altar is not meant for good but for evil. Witchcraft is destroying many people's lives. Some people who are affected by witchcraft are not aware that they are under witchcraft attacks. On an evil altar is where an enemy gives an idol a sacrifice to carry out a wicked request towards a person or a group of people. A lot of people seek workers of iniquity who practice sorcery for various reasons. King Saul, the first king to our nation, seek a worker of iniquity to give him guidance when the Most High stopped speaking to him. Then said Saul unto his servants, Seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servant said to him, Behold, there is a woman that hath a familiar spirit at Endor. Israelites, don't be deceived. A lot of our people seek the workers of iniquity to get ahead in life or to come against a person. Most Israelites seek the workers of iniquity with a familiar spirit to destroy their own people. Majority of the people who seek a worker of iniquity that practice sorcery have the best reputation. The reason they have good reputation to disguise their wickedness. Those who practice witchcraft and sorcery will appear to be the nicest and sweetest people in the world. They will befriend you to torment you. If your ways please the Most High, he will show you everything in the spirit realm. The scriptures warn us not to associate with such people because they will defile you. Regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. Israelites, once you find out a person is a worker of iniquity or a person who seek a worker of iniquity, you should cut all ties with them. Such person will defile you and your life will fall apart if you continue to associate with them. We will go more in depth on witchcraft in another chapter. The workers of iniquity who practice witchcraft and sorcery need an altar to give their gods a sacrifice. Remember, an altar is a place where humans interact with spirits. That is how witchcraft and altars mingle together. Israelites, if your spirit is tied to an evil altar, you're not in control of your life. A lot of Israelites are not in control over their life. The heathens have more control over your life than you. When you make covenants with the heathens to serve their gods, you give their gods power and control over you. When Adam and Eve made a covenant with Satan, Adam and Eve unknowingly made Satan their God when they obey him and made a covenant with him. That is how Satan said to Adam, because you listen to me and not your God, the most high, I am king over you. 
Satan went on to say, no deliverance will come to you until the appointed time. That is why the Israelites are not the only nation of indigenous black people being oppressed and controlled by the other species of mankind. All of Adam's descendants are oppressed. But now, O Adam, by reason of thy fall, thou art under my rule, and I am king over thee. Because thou hast hearkened to me, and hast transgressed against thy God, neither would there be any deliverance from my hands until the day promised thee by thy God. When you make covenants with idols, you are making that idol your God. Israelites, that is why it is important that you know the repercussions to what you're accepting. Many Israelites, including me, unknowingly made the God of this world our God when we practice religion. We made a covenant with the God of this world when we accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior. The head leaders of the synagogue of Satan have altars in their churches built to Jesus. Jesus is the God that is served in Christianity. Every altar in Christianity is built to Jesus. When you and I accepted Jesus, whose image is put on their altars and ingrained in the minds of many in the beast religion, we accepted Jesus, the Roman God, to be our Lord and Savior. The problem with all of this is that Jesus is not the Most High, the God of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Israel. When we accepted the Roman God as our Lord and Savior, we fulfilled the scriptures that said we will worship and serve gods our ancestors have not known in the land of our captivity. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people, from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. And there ye shall serve gods, the work of men's hands, wood and stone, which neither see, nor hear, nor eat, nor smell. Every Israelite who accepted Jesus, the Roman God, as their Lord and Savior, their spirit is tied to the altars built to Jesus in the beast religion. If you didn't break the covenant made with Jesus on the evil altars in the pagan church, your spirit is tied to the altars built to Jesus in Rome. This is the reason so many people cannot see the Messiah that came in the Father's name. The evil altars their spirit is tied to in the beast religion prevent them from seeing the role of our deliverer. If our people could find the Most High, the Father in the scriptures, they will know that he alone is our Savior and King. I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord, and there is none else. Tell ye, and bring them near. Yea, let them take counsel together. Who hath declared this from ancient time? Who hath told it from that time? Have not I the Lord? And there is no God else beside me, a just God and a Savior. There is none beside me. Look unto me, and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth. For I am God, and there is none else. When the Holy Spirit opened the sealed scriptures to you, you will comprehend the role of the Messiah that was sent by the Father to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The Most High sent the Messiah to gather the sheep back to the Father. The synagogue of Satan imitated the Messiah and transformed their counterfeit Jesus into a God in the beast system. Every Israelite in the awakening that have not broken the covenant made in religion on the evil altars, they are being controlled by Rome, regardless if they are in the awakening. The Israelites who have not repented and seek deliverance from the evil altars in religion won't comprehend the truth in the real awakening because Rome's doctrines have blind their eyes. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. This is why when the truth of the word is being taught in the real awakening, many Israelites who say they have come out of religion reject the truth. They have been programmed to accept the false Messiah as their Lord and Savior. 
When they accepted the Roman God as their Lord and Savior, they rejected the God of Israel as their Savior and King. This is not the first time our people have rejected the Most High, the Father. No one should be surprised about the rejections the Most High received from his people. The Israelites have rejected the Father on multiple occasions, and the scriptures are a testimony against the Israelites for their transgressions against the God of Israel. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people in all that they say unto thee. But they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. According to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them up out of Egypt, even unto this day, wherewith they have forsaken me, and served other gods, so do they also unto thee. When your spirit is tied to an evil altar, regardless if you stop going to church and practice religion, you will never get ahead until you're delivered from the evil altars speaking against your life. The scriptures taught us to prophesy against their altars. Not only should we speak against their altars, but break down their wicked altars in every high places the heathens worship their gods. When you know the word, send a fire of the Most High to consume their wicked altars. The Most High is ready to destroy every evil altar that is standing between him and his people. The Most High said he will slay the people in front of their idols. Israelites prophesy against their evil altars by speaking the word. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face toward the mountains of Israel. And prophesy against them, and say, Ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord God. Thus saith the Lord God to the mountains, and to the hills, to the rivers, and to the valleys, Behold, I, even I, will bring a sword upon you, and I will destroy your high places, and your altars shall be desolate, and your images shall be broken, and I will cast down your slain men before your idols. And I will lay the dead carcasses of the children of Israel before their idols. And I will scatter your bones round about your altars. In all your dwelling places the cities shall be laid waste. And the high places shall be desolate. That your altars may be laid waste and made desolate. And your idols may be broken and cease. And your images may be cut down. And your works may be abolished. And the slain shall fall in the midst of you. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. The word of the Most High that is being spoken in the form of truth will cut your enemies. All Israelites in the real awakening should praise the Most High, the Father, for delivering them from the gates of hell. If the Most High didn't call us out of darkness, we would be a part of the massive group of people in the beast system that is on the broad road that leads to destruction. Israelites, Give the Most High the glory for saving you out of the house of bondage to be sanctified by his words, for his words are truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Israelites, if your ways please the Most High, he will send you countless dreams, showing you all the altars, speaking against your life. If the Most High believe it's necessary, he will even show you the workers of iniquity conspiring against your life. The Most High is merciful. There's no good thing will he withhold from his people that walk uprightly. The Most High will warn you in the spirit realm. Israelites, that is why it is important for you to understand the spirit realm and spiritual warfare. The spirit realm reveal everything the eyes of the flesh cannot see. The invisible enemy as well as the spiritual wickedness that is taking place in the beast system. Shift your focus to the spirit. That is how you walk in the spirit. Also serving the Most High in the Spirit and in truth. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Evil altars are disguised in various forms all over the beast system. The workers of iniquity hide behind religion to practice sorcery and to control many with their wicked altars. A lot of people hide their wickedness behind religion. Don't fall into the traps the Satan's made in the beast system to be a stumbling block to you. Evil altars are destroying many people's lives. 
Israelites, the time has come for you to recognize the devices, the Satans and the workers of iniquity use against you to keep you oppressed. Your enemies will continue to rule over you if you don't break the covenants and send the fire of the Most High against their evil altars. Honor the Father and serve him in the spirit and in truth, just as he command of you. When you were in religion, you didn't know the Most High. Take the time in the awakening to get to know the Father, the God of Israel. Don't let the workers of iniquity who serve devils control your every move when your spirit is tied to their evil altars. Israelites, let the Most High be the one to order your steps. The steps of a good man and woman are ordered by the Most High, the God of Israel. Make sure the Most High is pleased with your ways so he can make your enemies at peace with you. In those days and in that time, saith the Lord, the children of Israel shall come, they and the children of Judah together, going and weeping, they shall go and seek the Lord their God. They shall ask the way to Zion with their faces thitherward, saying, Come, let us join ourselves to the Lord in a perpetual covenant that shall not be forgotten. 